like I said, it's so close to us. Um, and like you said, last year before last, we did a focus, very similar focus with, um, uh, and many of the bands just mentioned were came over in, with villages and etc. Did uh, which was my first great escape uh, for the company. And you know, we're, we're passionate about pushing Irish bands. And like I said, it's a level playing field as well. Like all these like statements are so true. There's you're, there's no different to any of the other territories really. I, I'm just really interested in the applying. Um, when, well, especially the bio, or like, or the story, should that be? This is, might seem like a bit of a silly question, but if you're a solo artist, should you be referring to yourself in the first person or the third person? And <laughs> uh, should you? No, but that's it. This, I genuinely wonder about that. And then, um, and then also as well, um, when we're talking about actual applying. It, it should be kept short, or should it be? Or do you want to know a lot, or or would you just? check out the band and then afterwards you look for yourself to find the real story behind them or should that be in the application as well uh, I think the more in there the better I mean we definitely do go off and you know check the other links um, and see what you're doing but it kind of drives me nuts seeing that of bands that apply that don't put any audio in there don't put any press don't put any of their tour dates don't put their goals like you say you know there's really nothing um, and to your comment about which way to yeah. direct it, I, I think, you know, that it should always be, like, you not writing the story. You know, it's like someone, you know, it's kind of the image that you have a team behind you where someone is writing about you kind of thing. Yeah, yeah it's good to know uh, as much as possible in the application, but we have, like, you can register to Sonic Bits with us or our own uh, application form and yeah, just like the audio, website, tour dates, just basic things, what the guy on my right said. <laughs> <laughs> I like short and sweet with the bio. Um, <laughs> but having said that, it is good to, you know, one paragraph bio followed by sort of highlights, you know, toured you know, with X band opened, uh, played this festival, you know, just some, you know, bullet points that are easy to pick up, you know, when you're not reading through a, you know, Russian novel. <laughs> I'm with you on the bio. Um, but I think it's also helpful. Um, we use Sonic Bids as well. Um, and you can, you know, upload your tour dates on there, all of that stuff. But we're definitely looking a bunch of different places online um, for like the artist website, Facebook, Twitter, Last.fm, um, all of that. But it's helpful for me, honestly, if you can keep on your artist website some um, backdated tour dates, like the past couple months or so um just so i can see if you don't have a tour coming up so i'm not thinking oh they don't tour they only play at home um you know if you had a tour like three months before just leave it up on your website um otherwise i email bands a lot and ask for that um it's just important like i said to know that bands are playing outside of their hometown um and to know in other markets where they're playing. Um, a lot of times, you know, bands have a much larger following at home than they do somewhere else. Who are they supporting in other markets? Um, you know, I mean, we all know that there are certain promoters in, in my hometown that have an affinity with certain bands. So, you know, in Austin, an Austin band will be opening for 10 different um, touring acts all across genres, but it's just because a local promoter likes them. And outside of Austin, I can get more of a gauge on on what they actually look like to people that don't know them and haven't seen them. And also having um, a live video um, on your site that you think represents your show well um, is important. I'm often searching around YouTube trying to find live clips of the band, and it's better if it's coming from you than someone's cell phone. Um, are there any other questions? Yep. 
Sorry, do you want to wait for the mic? Because we're filming. Just wondering, uh, Ian Wilson made a point yesterday about uh, bands chasing radio stations. He was like, maybe not put too much energy into actually chasing after, like sending out demos to radio stations constantly and trying to find the people in there. I'm just wondering, in terms of all your festivals, how much kind of percentage-wise of the acts that actually play are acts that you found through the band directly getting in touch with you with a demo and saying, come to my site, and kind of how much would be from... Uh, would say word of mouth or finding things on the internet. Like, is it something that um, bands getting directly in touch with you is actually that worthwhile for them to spend that much energy trying to contact people? You have to apply, right? Yeah, I mean, for for us, it's uh, it's applying. So we we go through that process, and I mean, obviously, we're out here. I'm here. You know, I was in Big Sound a week ago. I'll be at Matt's event a week, and. Uh, Fortunately, I don't get to make it to Lizzie's now because we're like right after hers ends and mine begins. But um, yeah, I would say through the applications, we choose probably about you know six, seven hundred bands that way, um, and then we probably do about a hundred and fifty invites of bands that we've seen uh, around the world, and then you know top it up with our headliners that we book through agents and stuff. Yeah, I'd, I'd say, yeah, de obviously applying, but there's also some of the, um, the partners that Great Escape are involved with, like Enemy and um, Line of Best Fit. They have their say too. Um, and uh, your question about radio as well, like somebody that I use quite a lot as a reference point because I do some XFM shows uh, with John Kennedy. You know, people like that does give a different element like radio. It's not just the submission. They still have to submit or, or most of the time or get asked to submit, which does happen sometimes. But... So there are such a range of different um, ways to get heard about. It's not just a submission, really, I guess. And, and referencing back to the previous question, just about um, getting the links correct, my little sticking point is when people put a link up and they go, oh, yeah, this is the song I want you to uh, listen, but it's really, really bad, and we're going to get a really good recording of it really, really soon. For me, I'll be like, don't send it to me, because yeah. until it's ready, until it's right, or this video is really, really good, but it sounds really, really bad, because it was put to a bedroom recording or something oh, and a bedroom rec recording can sound great but you know if, if you're not happy with it and you're already putting it in your bio that you're not happy about it and it has happened um, yeah do it when it's ready and right yeah and I guess back on that point like it is not all submissions um, you know radio stations and labels and press partners and you know all these people kind of suggest acts and acts that they want to work with on a showcase and you know so it came come that way as well I mean, I'm honestly happy when a band reaches out to me. I know they're serious. I know they're going to work hard once they get to town, and they're going to do that research and reach out to other people. So I definitely don't look at it as a bad thing or a waste of time. Um, it's just a lot more effort on your part. I don't have much to add. It's, we have the submission process, too, but there are partners that we work with you know, every year labels, um, you know, agents, et cetera, who come to us directly. Um, and yeah, there are the, the odd bands where I'm like, we'd really love to see you play this year. Um, but it's it, just from a logistic standpoint, um, because you don't know if that band's even going to be available or, you know, or interested for that matter. Um, I tend not to do that as much as, you know, I might have once done. I was more optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> Can you all tell from the energy levels that Matt's festival is in nine days' time? <laughs> the rest of them are really enthusiastic and fresh, and Matt's like, I'm so tired. <laughs> um, I just saw that Madeline from Culture Ireland has come in, and, and I know she hates when I do this, and I don't want to embarrass you, Madeline, but Culture Ireland have funded... Music from Ireland's activity at all of your festivals. This, there is no way that all of the bands you invite could get to play at your festival if Culture Ireland weren't standing behind us. And I would just like you all to turn around and say thank you to Madeline. Madeline, don't look behind. Um, and just if you had a question, Madeline, can I can we wait? We'll get the mic to. Hi, everyone. I'm Madeline. I'm here representing Culture Ireland. 
Um, I suppose just a point of information really is that Culture Ireland doesn't just support bands going to great showcases like this. It also has a regular funding program to support bands who get to tour elsewhere. So please remember that if you do get bookings and you want help in terms of travel and accommodation, do apply to Culture Ireland. They have applications four times a year, so to bear that in mind. And also just to say that um, with Ireland hosting the EU presidency for the first six months of 2013, there's a big focus on Europe. So in terms of the European festivals that are happening in the first six months of next year, particularly the Great Escape and Eurosonic, I'm not sure about Reaper Ban in terms of the timing of that. It's September. All right. So in terms of those ones there, the Great Escape and Eurosonic, because they happen in the first six months of the year, you know, again, we'd be particularly keen to support bands, not just to attend those showcases, but if you can actually get any other gigs as a result of that in Europe, definitely be thinking about Culture Ireland. We're very keen to support bands to get out there. And I suppose the question I would have to the panel is, we're always saying to bands, and I'm sure Angela is the same, that particularly if you're travelling as far as South by Southwest or Canada, can you try and get other gigs while you're there? And easy for us to say that, but I would wonder, do you guys have any advice as to how bands can source good other venues to play so that they can maximise the time when they're out there? So that's the question I would have. Um, kind of like I said before, I I do like it when bands do um, play day parties, especially if they're coming all that way. Um, so certainly, if bands are coming to South by Southwest, I recommend playing more than just your official showcase at night. Um, ways to go about finding those gigs, blogs that have supported you in the past. Most of them are are hosting day parties. Um, if you hire a publicist um some of the pr firms are hosting day parties um just look at what some of the programming was the year before um find out the clubs that book bands similar to you um and maybe contact some of the clubs directly see what they have going on who's hosting parties there um New York and LA are good markets to hit around South by Southwest um you can sometimes get a cheaper flight flying into New York anyway, um, maybe play a show there, hop in a van, see what other shows you can get on the way down to Austin. Um, it's not the easiest thing to do for sure, uh, but maybe you know look at bands that are playing the festival and already posted on the website and see if you can you know share costs with somebody um, and hop on some shows together. I suppose just as a, a point of information on that as well if you are selected to play Canadian Music Week, CMJ or South by Southwest you do require visas um, so if you're going to showcase only you uh, so for CMJ, for, certainly for Canadian Music Week as long as you're not getting paid for the show or no one's paying in at the show it's a showcase um, when you start to do other gigs on the way out or the way back, you have to plan advance and enough to make sure you can secure American or Canadian visas. So just keep that in mind. Uh, just for CMJ, we have a similar thing when there's daytime and nighttime unofficial things going on. So same advice applies. Um, and then one of the other nice things about New York's location is its proximity to, you know, Philadelphia, Boston, um, Washington, D.C., I mean, even Toronto. Um, you know, take a look at the clubs in those cities that are, you know, in the appropriate size range that are booking bands um, that you like or have an affinity with um, and reach out. See if they have a support slot on the, you know, Monday night that you have open. Um, it's fairly easy to get in touch with these people. It is the busiest time of year, um, so there's a lot going on, but that also means there's shows basically every night of the week. So, you know, there's there's op open spots there, so it's definitely worth doing your, your research and your homework if you don't have somebody booking shows for you already in the, in the States. Um, I just wanted to ask about the use of sonic bids. Um, all the festivals seem to go through sonic bids for, for you know, uh, applying. But um, there's often kind of confusing results 
from Sonic Bed the Times. I mean, I've been at Suck Suck West with bands and Eurosonic and CMJ over the years. Sometimes rejections come back and then, in fact, invitations come from the, um, you know, direct from the, um, fr- from the festival, but maybe there's been a rejection by Sonic Bids. And this year, in fact, um, I worked with Sweet Jane, who got selected for C and J, but only a few weeks ago. So I don't know whether that was like, whether it was sort of an American band or something, because by that time, all the funding had been um, allocated for the Irish bands travelling. So we had to, unfortunately, um, and the showcase was already, uh, the Irish showcase was already arranged. So we had to, you know, decline the offer, which is a shame. But um, so just wondering, like, whether that's a mistake on Sonic Bid's part, or uh, no, that's my fault. Um, we it, any communication that comes through Sonic Bids is done by the promote, you know, the the festival, um, and uh, you know, it's we have a small staff. It's not always a perfect sort of system. Um, there are we, are we, always are a lot of bands that we like and are interested in finding a spot for, but at the end of the day. We can't, and vice versa. So, apologies for that confusion. Um, I, next yeah, exactly. <laughs> we all wait for that name. Were there any other questions? Yeah, just over here. Hi, how's it going? Um, I just like to, just to, just interested in finding out about. Um, media partners in your festivals. Like, I know there's a, a very good TV show here made in Ireland, Other Voices, and I know the producers go to South by Southwest every year and stuff like that. And I was just wondering, do your festivals invite media outlets, m- music broadcasters to your festivals? And what's, what, what's it like then when you get them there? Do you, say, do you suggest stuff to them? Do you ever point them in the direction of where they should go? And um, yeah, how do you interact with media outlets from around the world and your festival? Uh, for us, you know, for media, there's a media application online that anyone can apply for. And then we have a company that kind of handles um, all of that for us, and they do the selection. And obviously, you know, we can't be passing out thousands and thousands of media, so there is a, 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 a process that they go through for selecting stuff. Um, and yeah, and definitely we invite specific media that we want at the event, like, you know, a rep from NME or a rep from, you know, these leading blogs like Hype Machine and all that type of stuff. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. Um, for Great Escape this year, we, uh, we added The Guardian. Uh, we'd done some uh, new Band of the Day nights um, at one of our venues at the Barfly, and it was like a natural progression. They'd been trying to do it for some time, and with Paul Lester's column and Casper, who's at the Guardian, we, it was just a natural fit. It was like a great fit, as well as like Enemy and Line of Best Fit and uh, the Fly magazine. Um, people that are writing about the bands that m- are maybe more tailored to the, the festival itself. Um, but I think it's a, it's a very kind of, with media and um, sponsors, it's a very fine line about getting the right ones involved. You know, it can. It's, it's sponsors that, and media partners that fit um, and that work, I think, because it can backfire, I'd guess, in some occasions. Um, not that I've ever been a party, that, but that's what my vision would be on if seeing it on the other side. I know people have to kind of make money to those shows, um, so if bands can get paid out of a sponsor, then that can only be a good thing. Um, most of it, particularly The Guardian, it's, it's media coverage. It's, there's no kind of transaction that takes place. It's just... Um, uh, it's the right people supporting the festival, I guess, and that's just going to naturally kind of hopefully grow. I think that's the big long term for Great Escape is to um, have more people involved on the day shows and the pop up shows. And like Red Stripe did some pop up shows, and again, it was a drinks brand, but at the same time, it worked um, and it allowed us to do those things. Um, so, yeah, it can only be a good thing, media partners. Um, as I said, we have the uh, uh, European Broadcasting Union as a partner, so we have radio stations from all over Europe uh, broadcasting and doing their thing from uh, Eurosonic. We have a special media compound ready for them, which, yeah, which um, um, what's the English word? Well, they can do their radio shows and everything. For 
Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And also, uh, we have very active uh, Dutch um, uh, television involved. They do sessions with artists. They pick themselves, and we host that too. Uh, there's national newspaper involved, and of course, um, yeah, uh, media accreditation is being given, but I'm not part of the marketing team. But of course, it's very important, and that's also where a festival can grow like getting all the right media into your festival so uh, the bands can get the most uh, promotion out of it. So, but mainly through the European Broadcasting Union. Do you have uh, yeah, I don't really have anything. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just in general. It's the same. It's the, it's the same. Um, we love the media. They love us, hopefully, and we make it work. Um, but yeah, it's similar to, to CMW. Basically, there's a you can apply. We invite people. We um, reject people sometimes. Um, and uh, you know, there's all websites, newspapers, radio stations, television, all those lovely things. Yeah, we actually have a hard time with this at this point um, because there's so much media that wants to come to South by Southwest, um, which obviously is important to us, um, especially with larger artists starting to come um, more and more every year. They're, that's who they're getting in front of at that point. They, you know, they've already got their label, their management, their agents. They're just looking for the press around a new album that they're putting out. Um, so we are at a point where we definitely are turning down a lot of people um, but, you know, still trying to find that balance of making sure the new outlets that are up and coming, um, trying to figure out who those are. I mean, it's almost as difficult as, you know, choosing the bands at this point and the programming, um, trying to figure out who's who and, you know, are they really lasting or is it just a personal blog? Um, it's difficult. Cool. Thanks. We, um, Music from Ireland, uh, four years ago, um, with funding from Culture Ireland, um, have been bringing 2FM and Today FM to South by Southwest. Um, and there was three layers to that reasoning. One was um, that there was quite a considerable amount of investment from Culture Ireland's perspective to fund the Irish acts who were going there. So it, it was felt that it was worthy of it contributing to the national story of that band as well. So, and then Today FM and 2FM were because they're the two national music broadcasters. Um, and, and I think that has worked on, on a level because it gives an Irish audience an idea of the prestige of being at an event like South by Southwest for that band. So for the band, you know, being at South by Southwest can work for your international story, but if you're selected and part of the Irish story out there and that's coming, that's being beamed back home, that adds another layer. So for us, it's a more bang for buck to round out a band's story um, and that it's not just your, your tree is falling out in Texas and nobody here knows so it's um from a media perspective the media still apply through south by southwest but then culture ireland and us will will coordinate with them <laughs> are there any more questions can I officially close the convention element of... Uh, one last thing, actually, and I'm just going to embarrass Madeline one last time. Also, the reason you're seeing so many international delegates and hearing some lovely American and European and Canadian and English twang over the last couple of days <laughs> is through... Um, and if any of you run festivals, again, it's, it's, it's something worth looking into. And it's not just music at funds, but there's a come, come here... See Here Award um, at uh, Culture Ireland where we um, applied for funding for the international delegates. We'd sit down with Madeleine and, and talk about who they are and what they do and how they can benefit the greater Irish story abroad by being here over the weekend. So the funding for all of these lovely people to be here this weekend is also Culture Ireland. So, um, the, and so a, a huge amount of the convention and speakers at the convention this weekend were a result of that funding as well. So I would just like to do a personal and on your behalf, thanks to Culture Ireland for that support and officially close. Uh,
and uh, officially close the convention element of Hard Work and Class Heroes 2012. Again, the three band tip sessions, the four panel sessions will, will uh, give us a couple of days to recover and should be uh, up online. Thanks to Air TV staff who you've seen all weekend. They've been shooting your shows, they've been streaming them live and they've you know, been doing all the panels and will upload them for us for no charge and they're an amazing partner to have so you should all talk to them about your international stuff. So huge thanks to Air TV for that as well. Thank you.